Now we'll learn how to find the range corresponding to a given domain. But first of all, let's just quickly recap on a couple of points that we looked at uh, before. Now, we've come across one-to-one -one functions, so the mapping diagram will look like this. One value in the domain maps onto exactly one value in the range. One-to-one -one function. We've also come across the many-to-one function. So, for example, we could have more than one value in the domain mapping onto one value in the range. How about this case, though, where we've got one value in the domain mapping onto more than one value in the range? This is called a one-to-many mapping. Notice that I avoided the use of the word function because it's not a function. It's a mapping, but it's not a function. And we'd see that straight away if we were to plot this on a set of axes. Those points, um, if we had x is equal to 2, we'd have corresponding y values of 2 and 6. And when x is equal to 4, we'd have corresponding values of 8 and, and 10. So you should be able to see that there's no way that this is going to pass our vertical line test. Those vertical lines are going to intercept those pairs of points. So a one-to-many mapping is not a function. Now we're going to find the range of f of x equals 2x. On the domain, x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 3. Here, x is a real number, so it means that x is continuously valued on the specified domain. As f of x is linear, all we have to do is substitute the endpoints of the domain into f of x. So f of 0 is going to be 0, and f of 3 is going to equal 6. So by taking the endpoints of the domain, substituting them into the function f of x is equal to 2x, it means that I can find the range of this function. So f of x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6. And it's quite common to write this as uh, y is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6, because usually when we're working with functions, we're often dealing with graphical representations, and, and the y values will obviously correspond to the range of the function. Let's have a look at this quadratic function then, x squared minus 2x plus 3. The domain is as before, x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 3, and it's continuously valued. So shall we try again the trick that we did before, which is to substitute the endpoints of the domain? So if we substitute 0, we'll get 3, and if we substitute 3, we'll get 6. So we could write down f of x is greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 6. We've done something very dangerous there, because we've made an assumption that the function is either continuously increasing or decreasing on this particular domain. And that may not be the case, because there could be a vertex, there could be a maximum or minimum value somewhere on this domain. So what we've done there, we can't make that assumption. It's wrong to make that assumption. And we really need to look at the sketches to see for ourselves why um, that's the case. So in the first example, we had f of x equals 2x, which we know is a linear function. And over our domain, uh, x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 3. We correctly worked out that the, the minimum value was 0 and the maximum value was 6. So that gave us our range. y is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6. On the other hand, what we've worked out for our quadratic function is this range here. We've got y is greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 6. So we've missed this vertex, which occurs on the domain. Really, what we should be trying to find is the y value of this, this vertex, this minimum point. And then, once we've got that, 
we can find our range correctly. So let's go about it. We've got f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 3. We can complete the square on that. f of x is equal to x minus 1 all squared plus 2. So when x minus 1 all squared is 0, it means the minimum value of this function is going to occur at y equals 2. So therefore, the range for this function is going to be y is greater than or equal to 2, but less than or equal to 6. Okay, you can now have a go at the multiple choice question.